Welcome to day 17. Today I finally hit a mark on my scale 75 kilos. Two and a half weeks ago I was 78 something which um, really was a menacing menacing message to me um, but now I am super happy that comparing from a few previous days when I was still in 76 something I am now 75 even, which is amazing. I'm very happy about it. As far as decluttering, as far as um, not shopping, everything goes as per plan. I see how our balance grows. Yesterday I sold my old photo lamps for 20 bucks. I think I mentioned it already. And it's not about $20. It's just about converting clutter into financial resources, which makes me super happy. Mind you, have to be honest, I did have to buy this microphone. I had Apogee, that's the brand, Apogee mic for many years, and my old one is literally falling apart. This metal piece from it coming off. So I don't even touch it. It stands on, on um, that special, uh, it sits on that special stand in my office. It's still working, but I can't really take it with me anywhere. So I did check into repairs. And by the way, I would encourage everybody to have a whole system on keeping warranties, receipts, invoices for things you buy. Anything over, in my, in my opinion, anything over $50 worth keeping those warranties and receipts. Because my first thing, I go into that pull-out drawer where I keep all the um, all this all, all those receipts and warranties and I call the manufacturer and usually usually it's pretty good you can fix things for free or exchange them in this case wasn't they were going to charge me hundred and fifty dollars to ship it to the states and then get it back in eight weeks and it would be what hundred and fifty dollars literally maybe even more and I I luckily found this microphone which I know is in 300 range for $120 and it was shipped in one day I'm super happy that I have it now all right uh, you see those are exciting things this is what happens when you are on dopamine detox those are the exciting things and I celebrate this today I had a medical test and if you haven't booked your tests and medical appointments, dental appointments, please don't delay. Do it as soon as possible. I think I should have mentioned it on the day one when you get your planner. If I didn't, my apologies. That's the first thing we should do with our health uh, to have this in place because Yes, you book an appointment with uh, MD or nutritionist or dietitian, but it may not be now. It might be weeks, even months from now. So today was my um, ultrasound, and coming home in early afternoon, I realized I was drained, I was low energy, no life was present in me. And usually in this situation, I would open my bottle of wine and just have a drink and kind of relax but not now I actually I actually don't, don't want it anymore yeah that's how I feel so what I did I had a luxury of having a short nap for 20 25 minutes oh boy oh boy how wonderful that was and definitely <clears throat> if you compare drink versus nap it's, it's no brain and you're not comparing cucumber to tomato right it's really you're comparing heaven to hell so uh, the quote of today by my beloved Brianna West who is my my friend she doesn't know she's my friend but I absolutely adore adore her wisdoms the quote of the day is negative emotions are good for you they signal that something is wrong and it's not the negative emotion that has to be fixed, but what is causing it? What is causing this negative emotion? For many years, uh, starting from my 
probably in childhood, but when relationships start, when the life starts, I would always hear, even from my very, very close relatives, oh, come on, oh, you just get over it, oh, you're exaggerating, oh, you're just too sensitive. This is, this is dismissing, <laughs> dismissing you. And today I would run away from a person who would say this to me because it's not helping. It's actually making situation worse because you already feel crap, but now somebody is dismissing your feelings by saying, come on, just get over it. No, it's not get, get over it. You have to do a bit of an analysis. What is causing this? I remember when um, I was just married, I found out that my husband at the time was uh, created his website, something like MeSpace, the predecessor for Facebook. And all the pictures he put on that site, all of them, all of them were not about me. And we were married and we even had a kid already. And most of them were presenting him in the most amazing uh, shape and form, but I was not present on us, uh, even on one picture. And I was very upset about it, and I was concerned. And my sister said, oh, you just, you, you're looking in, into this too deeply. You just get over it. And you know, may, maybe if my husband was um, a super rich oligarch, I probably would think, yeah, I have to suck it up because I'm getting all these benefits in life and yeah, I have to eat dirt to deserve it. But he wasn't anything like this and eventually no wonder we divorced because uh, there was no love, no partnership in this particular marriage. By the way, now I know he's very happily married and he has an adorable wife. I hope he will treat her very well. All right, so that's the quote and if you're in your early 30s and 40s, yes, you still have the time to learn about people and you have energy to go through crap. At 50, you don't have energy to go through crap and you have a good sense of who is who by, by, by now, I hope. So yeah, no, no, no need to deal with uh, uh, BS. No need to put, put up with it. Okay, so that was um, today's. I did challenging yoga class. It was more like a Pilates. I couldn't even finish it. No, I did finish it, but I had to modify a few very hard exercises, especially side plank. I can do side plank, but to do the plank on my elbow and do the modification such as crunches, that's too much. So I had to modify those exercises now th this is the benefit of carrying on with yoga journal because January 17 I would write couldn't do the dolphin plank but maybe February 17 or March 17 I would look into this note and I would say hey I could do one or five and I think uh, the other reason is the lighter I get of course the easier all those exercises will become because I have to push less body weight on my little little thing, uh, fingers and wrists and arms. I have very small arms. All right, uh, now what is the theme of the day? Today is the 17th and yesterday I spoke about alcohol. And you say, oh, just one day, quit the drinking. Well, if you can do it, kudos to you. And I think w there is no reason we shouldn't do it unless you have serious serious issue with alcohol and then obviously you need uh, you need intervention you need help uh, way beyond what i am suggesting i am my suggestion goes to people like me that fl fl flirted with this idea of chic and fun but alcohol supposedly giving you whole way too long so today i am going to share with you a few strategies i use for meal planning I have several, not several, I have about 20 cooking books. I'm going to show you just three. Uh, and it's not about my cooking books. You will find yours. And in Canada, when you go to Indigo, cooking books are dirt cheap. And it's just so tempting to buy all of them. Because seriously, sometimes you can get a, a fabulous book for five bucks. 10, 15, you can get 
pretty much anything. So I'm using all my books to go through them and search for recipes that inspire me, that look doable or something I want to try. So I would suggest to look through your cooking recipes and if you don't have any books, obviously you can use internet, but cooking books are cool. I actually, actually, I thought I had too many and I started decluttering them until I visited my hostess in Quebec City and a lady, the lady had about maybe 200 books and I said, okay, Tatiana, you still have a room to grow. So I'm not decluttering my books, but I'm not buying new ones because I made a pact with myself, not until I study every recipe and try everything and check it off, I'm allowed to buy any more because 20 is plenty. I think even five is plenty. So just a few examples. This is one of my favorite books about keto diet. You see it's this 30 day piece, amazing illustrations, so inspiring. And uh, I like books that not only give you recipes, but also give you ideas. Like how wonderful it is to have mason jar for your daily salad if you if you have to take lunch with you to work. Just so appetizing to look at mason jars. I, I put everything into mason jars or kilner jars as soon as I can. No plastic lives in my kitchen for more than a minute. So something like this, very conventional. Another book that I find interesting is about chakras and how to eat according to your chakras. Um, some people would think I'm crazy, but I find it also very entertaining because this book gives you suggestions that for your heart chakra, you eat green and list of different green foods and so on and so on. I actually did it myself. This is how much I like the uh, chakra ideas. Um, mind you, chakras are great because there are seven days in a week and seven chakras. And sometimes you can creatively, creatively organize your yoga routine, your meditation according to chakras because there are seven and seven. I actually have uh, rings with crystals according to chakras and today I'm wearing my lemon quartz ring. They're very cheap, they're like 20 bucks on Etsy, maybe 30. And it's giving me that new vibe every day. Okay, let's celebrate solar plexus chakra and let's, let, let's make this day about yellow and it will be my yellow lemon quartz ring and it will be um, a melon maybe or yam potatoes or something yellowish on my table lemons maybe just just lemon lemons another type of books i like something like this that connects his history style and recipes this particular book is not really about recipes and cooking it's more on general culture how all these famous dinners were organized, who were present, like John Kennedy, Jacqueline Kennedy, or something like this. So connecting history and cooking is something that I found fascinating. So I got this book and I think I did one or two recipes from it, but amount of interesting information and inspiration and you know, why not feel like Grace Kelly a little bit, right? Why not? So you get your sources, your books, and the idea is to crystallize all what you find into, let's say, 10 recipes, 10 meals, and organize those recipes into your self-made cooking cards. I'll show you the cards I have. I have this stand that I bought God knows when. I don't know what it was, but it looked so cute. And I thought, oh, I can put something, a picture on it or a message. I actually thought of um, using stencils and putting something here, but I already have my my board with our daily, daily activities. So it would be too much signage. And now it's working to hold my cooking cards. So those are the ones I created. And what I did, I just took a recipe for entree, took recipe for side dish and dessert. 
and mix and match them and organize them in the cards. Doesn't mean I can't use entree with another side dish. And sometimes I do, I think, what I was thinking, how would I do grilled bacon with, with, um, with salad? It just doesn't make any sense because grilled bacon, you would want grilled vegetables with it. But the point is that you have to narrow down all this endless flow of information we get into something that you can sit down at the beginning of the week and say, okay, honey, we have this in the fridge, we have this in the pantry, we, w we haven't tried this, let's connect this somehow into, uh, into some solution. And we pick two, three, four cards and I put them at the front and I don't have to think forever and be lost in translation on what we are cooking. You may ask me, well, how did I do the cooking cards? I'm using Canva and I use Canva professionally. So I pay for the access to all the elements and elements are shapes, lines, and nice pictures like this. You may not get all the nice pictures if you have a free version of Canva, but you'll get some. And worst case scenario, you can always print or take some images from magazines and just uh, glue them on the cooking card. Or if you don't need visual inspiration, you can just do the menu. I'm sure Canva would have solutions, but what Canva has, it has all those pre-designed menus. So I picked the one that was kind of minimalistic and appealed to me and was nice and light. And I modified the template into my day one, day two, day three. So I have 10. And from time to time, when we want to try something new, I, I go on Canva, get this file and modify a few things, print new one. But at the beginning, it was super helpful to get all this vast amount of information and create cooking cards. And I don't think we started with 10 right away. I think we had five. And then in six months, when actually during the lockdown, when it was impossible to eat out. Not that we ever were um, eating out. Steven doesn't like restaurants. And now I had enough of them in my life. So I actually enjoy my kitchen. I enjoy my process. I enjoy my books. I enjoy my music, my pottery barn utensils, my linen napkins. And I don't want to eat um, whatever. Of course, I would not say no to a fancy, nice restaurant or some nice club. But hey, let's face it. Today, it's it used to be expensive, but today it's just unaffordable. So we create some style around us. Okay, so th th those were my ideas on meal planning. And uh, today, day 17, let's narrow down all what we maybe know already, maybe want to try into some something tangible. You put them on and it will help you with meal planning, which I'm going to discuss tomorrow, how to connect what you already have with those cards. And this is what's, what's working for us. Thank you for staying with me and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.